are. Yes, indeed. I have been unmuted, unfortunately for you. This is Live Irish Myths. You are very welcome to the Mythical Ireland Library. I'm your host, Anthony Murphy. This is episode number 262 of our live stream tonight. I am still attempting uh, with much bravery <laughs> to compile a list of the top 50 books uh, that I recommend that you read if you want to learn about Irish mythology. Um, we've already had a few episodes about this tonight. I am trying to recommend books numbers 31 to 40. It's going to get a bit easier now, I think, because I don't have the stress of, I'm just making a tiny adjustment to the camera. Uh, I don't have the stress of, you know, uh, who goes in the top tier and who doesn't. You're all very welcome. Hope you're all in good form. It's Monday, of course. That means it's live stream day. Um, I hope life is good with you all. Uh, I'll get around quickly to the uh, any comments and say hello to people. I'm hoping to get finished a little bit early tonight because I have to drop my daughter to the train station. So if you'll forgive me for that. Uh, we'll still have a full episode, don't worry. But uh, I just won't be hanging around till half nine. Hopefully we'll be out here by about 10 past. Elaine Dent, Lincoln Felter, as always, first to comment where it's 21 Celsius in central Texas today. Wow, it was four degrees earlier on here. Uh, so yes, quite a lot warmer than it has been, uh, Elaine. Uh, temperature starting to go back up again. Sandra Boothroyd is saying, evening all you mysterious mythical islanders. In for another interesting evening. Can't wait. Good evening, Anthony. Well, I hope that your uh, excitement is justified, uh, Sandra. Uh, thank you for the uh, the, light, the nice hello. Samantha Healy is saying hello to everybody. Samantha, good evening to you. Hope you're in good form. Rex Fortenberry is joining us from a bright Louisiana. Ready for more book titles. I have my reading list for the next several years. And you know, you'll still only scratch the surface. I've just there's so much. Paul Alborl is saying hello. Good, so good to see you. I've missed being able to be with you. Paul, Alabama, Gulf Coast. Paul, do we have to wish you a happy new year? I don't think we've seen you since 2023. So happy new year. It's good to uh, uh, see you on the live stream. As always, Brendan Byrne has joined us from Glendalough, where it is uh, sleety raining at the moment. Three degrees. Ugh. Yeah. Wayne Bird is in the house. Hello and welcome, Wayne. Uh, Wayne, one of our patrons and uh, uh, always getting the juicy stuff over on patreon.com forward slash mythical Ireland. Yes, do it. You know you want to, if you haven't done so already. Brian L, is it? Underscore 72 is saying, Evening, Anthony, and good luck with the list. <laughs> yeah, I need the, the look, Brian. Uh, good to see you on YouTube. I'm not sure if we've seen you before. Don't recognize the handle. And, of course, always, always say to somebody I haven't seen before, subscribe to the other channel uh, to get notified and ring the little notifications bell. Brian, al uh, always a pleasure. Yeah, always a pleasure to welcome new people to the team. John Main is uh, uh, missed us last week in freezing Mystic, Connecticut, minus nine Celsius. Good to be back in San Francisco, where it's in the low to mid twenties. Wow, sounds like a bit of a boast. John, I'm delighted you're finally getting warm temperatures. Uh, Samantha Healy is saying hello to all to our ah, brilliant stuff. Add Astro music. The seasons have a change in the energy for the better. Can't wait for some sunny hikes to Megalitz galore. Well, don't forget. In the coming week, we have St. Bridget's Day and in bulk, um, St. Bridget's Day, probably a Christian Christianized celebration of the ancient uh, beginning of spring. Spring is in the air. And Scott Doherty's in the house. And greetings to you also. And I hope Bill is in good form. Please pass on my best wishes to him. Lexi Erickson has joined us. The Tua. Uh, and hello, Anthony, the Tua and Tom. It's balmy. 13 Celsius in Denver. Sunny, wow, sunny and 13. Things are looking up, Alexi. That's all I can say. Tom King is in the house. Hope all are good fettle on the road from the kingdom and listening in. Enjoy story time. Wow, you're coming home from Kiri. What are you doing in the kingdom, Tom? Brilliant stuff. Paul Campbell is saying, Re Texas. Last Saturday, I was at the Galway Astronomy Festival 2024 in the Menlo Park Hotel in Galway City in Ireland. Some of those present, not me, are going to Texas in the USA. Uh, us to observe the total total solar the total solar eclipse take place on the 8th of april 2024 wow hope to get clear skies alexi is finishing up all the leftover yule candy wow 
share it round Lexi so your teeth don't fall out. Valerie Gallagher, <laughs> hello to all from Cloud, chilly Rhode Island. It's cloudy, I presume. Perfect weather for good books and good people. Yes, indeed. Hello, Valerie. Good afternoon to you. Pleasure to welcome you as always. Uh, Sue Printer. Oh, uh, uh, Elaine is saying uh, she loved the shot of Tom at the Forge with the Irish Wolfhound. What a brilliant shot by our friend Daniel, isn't that right? Sue Prenter is in the house. Evening all. Another lovely episode to look forward to. Hope you're well yourself, Sue, and uh, thanks for joining us. As always, Debbie Sheehy is saying hello from a, a sunny Melbourne where it's 18 Celsius at this hour of the morning. Well, Debbie, how lucky are you? Happy Tuesday to you from all of us still in Monday here in the northern slash western hemisphere. Catherine Cleary is in San Diego, but since last Monday, we've had a 1,000 year flood from torrential rain. Much damage around the county. Global warming on the rise. Have dried out and happy to be happy to join you all. Oh, goodness. Well, stay safe, uh, Catherine. And if you're watching us, I suppose that's a good start. Um, yeah, bloody hell. Uh, dry out soon. Simon Otusafar is in the house. Good evening, Anthony. Noticeable stretch in the evenings now. Looking forward to inbox. Bring forward. Yes, indeed. Noticeable is right. The mornings take a while to come back around. Sun very, very kind of gradual. But uh, the evenings, definitely. Helen Hurst Chater is joining us. Hello and good afternoon to you, Helen. Hope that you are in good form. Snapper Earl says, howdy do. <laughs> howdy do to you, Snapper. <laughs> Alva Kelly is saying, Vanity Anthony and all the great and good to a now, I am not going to, for a moment, try to identify who are the great ones and who are the good ones. <laughs> and who are the absolutely average ones. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. Uh, getting too much fun out of that. Uh, Pilar Goldstein is in the house. Goldstein Day, even. Hello. So happy to catch you. Well, Pilar, it's a pleasure to welcome you, as it always has been. I hope you're in good form. Michael Trott is in New Zealand. And he's saying hello and greetings to from Tuesday morning in NZ to the Tua diaspora and all who enjoy the proceedings. Well, brilliant stuff, Michael, and a pleasure to welcome you. And McCallum is in the house where it's one Celsius. That's that's po something positive. <laughs> it's plus one, I presume, not minus one. Yay. Lots of rain and so much moisture. Lots of fog. Sounds very Irish. And you, you know, you'd get on well over here. Uh, Tuesday Thompson says happy mythology Monday. That's good enough for us. Thank you very much, uh, Tuesday. Uh, Valentina uh, Bern Bernardi is in Glastonbury. Valentina, always a pleasure. Hope things are lovely over there in the Isle of Avalon. 22 Celsius in Auckland, New Zealand, says Michael. <laughs> that sounds like a boast. That's more than enough. You can shave a few degrees off and send them to your Northern Hemisphere friends. The big news this week, folks, of course, is that I am working hard night and day Quite literally. What happened there? Ooh. My screen went blank. All the screens went blank. I still seem to be okay. Are, are you still receiving? Um, I've been working night and day. As soon as I said night and day, all the screens went blank. Uh, on the Vornox monograph, the next in the Mythical Ireland monograph series, I'm very excited about this. I spent... Uh, a considerable amount of time over the last few days sifting through images, writing, uh, designing um, plans and maps for the monograph and communicating with certain people. I Some things I just don't want to talk, reveal at this moment of time. But let's just say um, this monograph is going to contain some things that aren't in the public domain in relation to Fornox. Um, really excited about it. Um, Publication, planned publication date is around St. Patrick's Day slash spring equinox. I'll touch wood when I say this. I'm hoping it will be actually printed and available before that, to be honest. Um, making good headway through it. Um, really, really happy with how it's going. And just really concentrated on it now. I wasn't, uh, as you know, I was working on it last autumn, but I had to stop because I was finishing the Return to Segish Companion, and there was so much going on. Now, late winter, early spring seems to be a good time to get a project finished. Anyway, I've shared the link there. You can pre-order the monograph um, on the Mythical Ireland website. The price is sixteen ninety-five. The estimated size is one hundred and twenty pages, which would be bigger than the other monographs. Uh, Bowen, I think, was one hundred and four. And I actually think I might struggle to keep it at 120. It might be more like 140. We'll see. 
Um, but the main thing is this, apart from Hartnett's paper on the excavations, which was published in 1957, uh, Excavations of a Passage Grave at Fornox County Mead, Proceedings of the Royal Irish Academy, apart from Hartnett's paper, which is out of print and hard to get and expensive, there is no book about Fornox. If you want to learn anything about Fornox, you have to read George Ogan's books about Nauth. You have to read Gabriel Cooney's book, The Landscapes of Neolithic Ireland. You have to read Carlton Jones's book, Temples of Stone. You have to read um, oh, the works of O'Kelly. You have to read Hartnett's paper itself. And uh, there is nowhere as far as I know, that you can read anything that might indicate mythology about Fornox. And the only place, of course, that you've ever been able to reference astronomical uh, information about the alignment of Fornox is in Island of the Setting Sun and on Mythical Ireland. So all of that's coming together in one book, the first book, what you could call, with, uh, 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 and with every respect to Hartnett, because I've been reading his work and I have great respect for him. I think he was a great archaeologist. Um, this isn't a book as such. This was not meant to be uh, widely read by, shall we say, ordinary people. It was for a specialised audience. So I'm redressing the 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 uh, deficiency, which is that there is no book about Fornox. Well, now there's going to be a book about Fornox. And I hope that you agree uh, when you get it. A very special book indeed. Yes, I'm very excited get my monograph while well, I put very in there Lexi you didn't actually say very medieval literature with a special focus on old and middle Irish texts is uh Caitlin Moon who I didn't say hello to just popping and said I have my PhD defense tomorrow well best of luck with that Caitlin I'm sorry that I wasn't able to get more involved in that I really am um I hope you can forgive me just so much to focus on here but look to be honest from what I saw of it you'll fly through it. I guarantee you, you'll be brilliant. And you'll be wondering why did I ever think otherwise, you know. But look, best of luck tomorrow. We'll all be thinking of you. We'll all be there in spirit and come out on the other side with a big smile on your face and some letters after your name. And it'll be fantastic. Erica Rivertree is in Louisville, Kentucky. Good evening. Good afternoon to you, uh, Erica. And uh, a lot of people wishing Caitlin uh, good luck. And uh, as I say, she'll be brilliant. They include Joe, Auntie Joe, who I'm not sure if I said hello to earlier on. Joe, if I did, you know, I'm getting to that age where I forget things. And if I didn't, hello anyway, you know. Um, yes. So uh, the Fornox monograph. Order your, uh, pre-order your copy now. All copies that will be sent out from here will be signed copies, of course. And I'd be very glad to sign that for you. So um, I shared the cover. And I'm delighted to say that, as I say, the writing, the photography, the layout and design is coming on. Uh, yeah, I'm making great progress. And look, hopefully two or three weeks of hard work and the thing will be finished and uh, I'll be able to send it out to proofreaders. Gordon Farrell is in the house. Gordon, I'm not sure if I said hello to you earlier. Um, and if I didn't, apologies. Um, oh, there you are. Just as I was starting to talk about the Four Knox monograph. Good evening to you. I hope you're in good form. Right. Um, I have the delicious task of continuing uh, the top 50 books about Irish mythology and folklore. And we are now on the fourth tier, as it were. So no tiers as such. It's, I, I keep saying it's hard to put anything ahead of something else. Well, it's not that difficult. The stuff that's in the top tier, I think definitely most of it, all of it deserves to be there, which place it occupies in the list, you know. Somebody calling themselves Dogda Morrigan is in the house. First time here. Well, you're very welcome, Dogda. Anybody who's called Dogda Morrigan is welcome on Live Irish Myths. Hope you're in good form uh, and thanks for joining us. And uh, Caitlin really appreciates the good wishes. You'll fly through it. I'm telling you, you no bother to you. You do it with your eyes closed. You do it while you're still asleep. You do it with your hands tied behind your back. You know, it'll be grand. Um, anyway, uh, I was looking at this earlier on, and yeah, look, uh, again, don't 
take the positions as an exact science because they're not. Uh, some very, very, very good books coming up in this tier. The first of which is... I could have spent time taking them off the shelves today. The first of which was written by an archaeologist. Um, yeah. Need to get off the chair, Anthony. <sighs> And it is called Archaeology and Celtic Myth, and it's written by the wonderful John Waddell. Uh, John has a new book out, um, which I haven't had a chance to read yet, so I can't say whether this would be on the list or not, and that's the one called Pagan Ireland, Ritual and Belief in Another World. I'm looking forward to reading that one, but I haven't had the chance uh, so I did I did read this one and it's fantastic. So John Waddell's Archaeology and Celtic Myth is in 31st position in our list of the top 50. Uh, now, um, if you want a flavor of this work, I know you'll all want to buy the book. I know that. Um, but if you wanted a flavor of it, uh, the Rhind Lectures uh, were given by John Waddell um in 2014 and um that's 10 years ago imagine and they're on youtube and um they're brilliant and they're a brilliant sort of introduction to um the uh material that's in the book um so i'll share a link to the first one and when you look at the first one in youtube there should be links to the others in the series but anyway, that's uh, John Waddell. John Waddell uh, is Emeritus Professor of Archaeology in NUI Galway. That's the National University of Ireland in Galway. And uh, he's an archaeologist who has taken a lot of interest in mythology. And in this book, I think uh, what I really loved was what, how he said, you know, I, 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 I'm not an expert. And, you know, uh, yeah, I'll read what he says. I think I read this before in an episode. I can't remember why we were reading it, but... This study is an exploration, and its central premise is that elements of pre-Christian Celtic myth preserved in medieval Irish literature shed light on older traditions, not just in Ireland, but elsewhere in Europe as well. As an archaeologist with no expertise in the study of myth and a complete deficiency in Old and Middle Irish, I am very conscious of the dangers and difficulties of this sort of exercise. Yeah. Um, so uh, there is a chapter in here uh, called the Otherworld Hall on the Boyne, and that relates to some of the mythology around Newgrange and the great monuments of Bruna Um There is um, uh, a chapter about uh, the Otherworld. There's a chapter about the horse goddess. There's a chapter about the goddess of sovereignty, sacral kingship, etc. Very good book. And you know what? Written by an academic, but for the general audience. Very, very readable book. I hope you'll agree. And very deserving of uh, a place in our top 50. Lexi agrees. Waddell's books are wonderful. I wonder if you had a chance to read Peg in Ireland yet, Lexi, and if you might share an opinion about it. Uh, Dog de Morrigan says, I have a, a good few books. Bit of their bit of there was one i had to get what would it be on your opinion but if i had to get yeah well if you look back a few episodes again dog de morrigan to our top 10 i actually think the top 10 really would be the ones that you, you kind of have to have read if you're kind of coming at irish myth and you don't really know any of it uh, and, I, and i was to recommend look some of those books say the top certainly the top five but maybe the top 10 if you had enough time uh, for reading they would be the ones um, so if you just go back on the Mythical Ireland YouTube channel and go into the live tab for the live streams, um, but -da, but -da, but -da, but -da, it's the one called Top 10 Books about Irish Mythology, and that turned into a top 50. I'll share the link with you. I'll share it there as a comment now so you can access that there. So that's the first one. Episode 259. So this is 262. So that was four episodes ago. Well, three if you like, but four really. 
Right, and onwards and upwards. There is a really brilliant book, which isn't really specifically about mythology, but it's more about folk traditions and especially to do with music and language. And this is a little bit along the lines of Maura McNeil's The Festival of Lunasa, which uh, was number 12 in our study, but which could easily have been in the top 10, except for it's a very uh, dense, is not the word, very comprehensive book. This, and I know the author, and this is why, um, you know, in earlier episodes, I was kind of stressing and straining a little bit about, oh, this one is brilliant. You know, how can I possibly put this on a lower tier? Um, and I think the reason, the only reason it's on a lower tier is it's not specifically about mythology. It's not specifically um, about legend and saga. You know, it's not about the deities as such. It's more, as I say, about music and some of the folk traditions. It's a brilliant book. Anyway, I'm going to pull it off the shelf. And the author had recently advertised that she had found the last batch of copies that she had at home and was offering them for sale and they were snapped up really quickly so i don't think hang on oh geez i suppose i could uh, i could i was going to say i could uh check whether it's available it's on the list regardless of whether it's available yep have to get off the chair on me this is a book by somebody who recently released another uh, album, a collection of songs, which is called Seven Daughters of the Sea. And her name is Podrigin Neolokhain. And she is a brilliant proponent uh, of the Irish language of uh, uh, traditional Irish music. She's just brilliant. Uh, and her book is called a Hidden Ulster, People, Songs and Traditions of Oriel. And again, the author is Podrigine Neolokhan. And this was published, it's a good long time ago now, I think, 20 years ago, maybe, 2003. Um, so I'm just going to, I want to make sure I have uh, 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 Hidden Ulster is number, th what should we say, 32. Number 32 is Podrigine Neolokhan's very comprehensive study. Again, this uh, book runs to 500 pages. Uh, Valerie says, I just ordered this CD, saw it on Lar Dooley's page. Yeah, well, you would have seen it on Mythical Ireland, I hope, uh, several weeks ago before Christmas, um, because uh, I got a copy of it and I just think it's fabulous. Um, so the songs are More Water, uh, The Great Mother, In Bulk, Spring, uh, Sauru Boy, Boy's Summer, Lumbo Von Kjol, Blackbird of Song, uh, Bianu, which is Blessing, uh, Me and Mahre, my, my Heart's Desire, Seven Daughters of the Sea, which is where the album gets its title from, uh, Shacht Ninian Namara, uh, Kuin Kine, Ancestral Keen, Colum Bon Shiachana, White Dove of Peace, and Bridget Boch, Gifted Bridget. And a beautiful artwork on the cover as well. Anyway, I'm promoting her CD as well as her wonderful book. So um, I um, had the great honour uh, for a, 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 a period of my life of being the editor of the Dundalk Democrat newspaper in County Louth. And uh, one of the things that the Dundalk Democrat was brilliant at in its earlier years. It was founded in the 1840s. Um, one of the things that it was brilliant for was, was publishing old songs and stories and folklore and legends. And there is a huge amount of music uh, that it was preserved thanks to the fact that it was published in the Dundalk Democrat. Sorry, my phone keeps... I don't know if you can hear that. My phone notifications are going off one after the other after the other. Um, sorry, just... Um, 
messaging my daughter. Um, let me just quickly check. Uh, Dundalk Democrat, yeah. Song collection, 421 to 433. So the Dundalk Democrat gets a huge amount of mentions in this. And uh, when I uh, was looking through the files of the old newspaper in the county library across the road from where I worked as the editor of the Dundalk Democrat, I was just so taken aback by the huge interest that the paper had had historically. Uh, and it was a wonderful thing to see. Um, yeah, so maybe somebody, I don't know, has anybody been able to find copies of that? Is it still available online? Uh, uh, Hidden Ulster. Podrigine, let's just... Uh, Oriel Arts. Oh, hang on. Something here after... Very limited copies remaining. Hidden Ulster, £35.99. So £36 sterling. Probably the equivalent of about 40 41 42 euros maybe 45 dollars um so i'm not sure because i thought i saw on her facebook her personal facebook profile a number of months ago that she was had the, the last few four courts press has it uh listed oh yeah out of stock out of stock okay and um, so it looks like um it would have to be ordered i see it listed on jstor the whole thing is hardly available on JSTOR, is it? Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's a, a review, a review of the book. So it looks like you'd have to get it secondhand. And anyway, it's fabulous. It's brilliant. Um, and McCallum says, yes, Paul Dugan's book, Hidden Ulster, is brilliant and translated into English. Caroline Dash is in the house. Good evening to you. Tronanawa Makara. Alva Kelly says, now that looks interesting. Yes, it certainly is. Uh, Adina, I guess we'd better warn Barbara Murphy to check your luggage before you leave. <laughs> Sally Siggins is joining us from Sligo, where it's crisp. Any plans to celebrate St. Bridget's Day? Uh, I don't have any specific event planned. Um, and I'm very, very busy with the Fornox monograph. But uh, next week's episode will almost certainly be devoted to all things Bridget and in bulk. Uh, 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 Sally, anything happening over that side of the country as a matter of interest? Uh, Johnny Finlay is saying, Ulsterman here, I have to reference that book on Hidden Ulster. You have to reference it. Have you seen it, Johnny? It's a fabulous piece of work. It's just brilliant. Samantha says, that's an excellent book, Hidden Ulster, one of my favourites. Brilliant. Delighted. Uh, it seems to be going down well. Was for sale in Newry a wee while ago, says Samantha. Yes, I think it's out of print, though. I think it's sort of secondhand only now, as a matter of interest. Oh, no, Anthony, don't do that. Um, I'm just going to look it up on ABE books. I had an old star. I had an old star. I can't find any copies. That's a terrible old star accent, Anthony. All the northerners would be going, what an embarrassment. But you know I'm right. Um, yes. Now, this has to be on the list. A, a, a work that would be called a little bit less academic and a little bit more popular. And the author is a good friend of mine. And I know he would agree with that. In fact, he would say that himself. He and I shared the stage in Clonakilty at Samhain last. And he is a, another wonderful, wonderful, wonderful proponent of uh, the Irish language uh, and uh, Irish folk traditions. The site is a... Uh, he, he's big into place names. He's big into saving old, obscure Irish words. And he's just brilliant in general. He's a wonderful scholar and he's an absolute gentleman. And uh, he and I became friends during the pandemic. And uh, as I said, we shared the stage. The result of which is the live podcast, which is available on the Mythical Ireland YouTube channel, um, which is uh, uh, the one that was called Listen to the Land Speak. Uh, and his name, of course, is Mancon. Magan. And by the way, if you're wondering where is that name Moncon come from, the Irish Moncon, M-A-N-C-H-A for the N, would be pronounced Mamachon, and it literally means little monk. So it has, uh, I suppose, a little bit of a religious undercurrent, but I'm kind of thinking little monk, more like a little druid, you know. Anyway, uh, there's two books here, and he's written several, uh, but these are these are wonderful. And this one in particular is the one that I'm going to put in uh, 33rd place. But 
uh, I will recommend the other alongside it. And that is, of course, the wonderful 32 Words for Field, a fabulous book. Um, and literally, um, there are 32 different Irish words which describe different types of field. And this is why um, not only is Moncon's work very popular, but this is why this book sold 95,000 copies. He announced that during the live stream. And I'm like, fair play to you, and I'm really happy for you. <laughs> but I was jealous too, because I'm like, I wish my books would sell that. Like, fabulous, fabulous. And easy to read. It's not dense. It's not academic. It's lovely. Um, and I suppose the importance of Irish words and language um, against a backdrop, he doesn't really get political, but against a backdrop of, you know, colonialism and all the shit that has happened in Ireland over the past eight centuries in particular, um, and all the stuff that we've managed to hold on to nevertheless. Anyway, the other one uh, is Listen to the Land Speak, a journey into the wisdom of what lies beneath us. Uh, and of course, as I say, that was the theme of our live podcast conversation in Debarras in Clonakilty during the Samhain Festival down there, which was organised uh, by the locals and Gyata Arts. And uh, it was a wonderful event. Uh, but uh, Monocon has to be on the list. And uh, as I say, a gentleman and a scholar and helping, I suppose, not just to help preserve all of that stuff, but to promote it and promoting the language in general and the speaking of it. Because, you know, we had suffered from post-colonial embarrassment, shame even. Um, a lot of people, uh, you know, in Ireland, there's a lot of people who really, really in love the Irish language and uh, speak it regularly. And then there's a whole lot of people who are nearly embarrassed to do, to do so. Um, but times have changed. I think a lot more people are interested in um, the Irish language, as it were, and Irish place names and all of that stuff, you know. John Main, highly recommended, great books. Barb Jordan is in the house a little bit late. Barb, that's perfectly okay. You're very welcome. Nonetheless, have that one in my queue, says Helen. Uh, Debbie Sheehy loves Monocon's books. T is giving us the eyes. Are they the... Um, what eyes are they? Um, this thing my sister was telling me about, about um, if you give a person the eyes a certain way. Um, oh, can I remember now? No, and I can't dig it out. Anyway, uh, Don Hilton is very open and honest. I'm late. Good evening, everyone. Good evening to you, Don. Brilliant. Uh, great to see you. Caroline Dash is going to check out those two books. The side eye. Yeah, but there's a word. There's a particular word with it. The something side eye. Um, give me a second. I have to find it now. Um, googly eyes. No, not googly eyes. Coda is making his presence heard um let me just find out what group what whatsapp group was that in um doo -doo -doo -doo, the bombastic side eye i don't know apparently it's a thing a TikTok thing or something anyway uh where am i going with the list yes now the challenge is who also occupies this tier who i have left off previous tiers Yes, there will be two. So yes, there is a brilliant book which we have read from on a couple of episodes that is just fantastic by a brilliant scholar. But it's a book that, again, would be very, very well liked by what you would call a general audience. I'm just making sure that I'm looking in the right place for it. Give me a moment while I dig it down. Let us just say that the main subject of the book. Uh, would be not um, Sylvanian. Yes. Uh, do, 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 sorry. Um, do, do, have to get up on the old. Sorry. 
Yes, 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 yes. It is the one that is called Irish Trees, Myths, Legends, and Folklore. And the author is Niall McCutcher, C-O-I-T-I-R. Uh, it, oh, I should have told you about who the publishers... I should be telling you who the publishers of all these books are. But anyway, I don't think you'll have any, find, any difficulty finding John Waddell's book. Uh, I don't think you'll have any difficulty finding... Well, you'll have fi uh, difficulty finding a hidden Ulster because it's out of print. Uh, thir 32 words for field. Uh, Monocon's publisher was Gill. I think he's going to self-publish his works from now on. Um, yeah, so this is Irish Trees, Myths, Legends and Folklore. It's published by the Collins Press. Now, this one was published 2003. I'm not sure if that's still in print, so I'll do a quick uh, Google search. Irish Trees, Niall McCutcher. Uh, okay, it seems to be widely available on uh, different uh, chapters. Eason's, Dubray, Blackwell's, Amazon, Vibes and Scribes, Charlie Burns Bookshop. Um, you, you, you may find uh, these are a lot of these would be Irish suppliers, so you should be able to find. But uh, Irish Trees, there is another one. Hang on a second. I just want to make sure that I have this on. Uh, I need to put the number beside it. Where is it? Yes. Uh, this is number, what did I say? 34. This is number 34. There's another one, which I think is Irish. Is it Irish? Niall McCutcher's. What, what's his other? Ireland's Wild Plants, is it? And, and, and something about herbs and bushes and shrubs and stuff like that. Uh, yes, Lisa is asking a very good question. The plan is, Lisa, when I finish the list, I will be publishing it on the website as a blog post. And I'll have number one, title, um, author, uh, year of publication, publisher, and a sentence or two about the book. That's the plan. Um, so bear with me on that. I haven't just completed. Uh, yeah, I still haven't decided exactly what's going where, but that's the plan. Yes, yes, yes. So Irish Trees by Niall McCutcher, a very deserving uh, 34th. Now, it's kind of starting to get a little bit difficult because there are still people who absolutely thoroughly deserve to be on this list and well up this list. Um, but it's how do you compare and what do you recommend one over the other? Um, okay, that's going to be in this tier. Apparently, Coda wants to take over the podcast or the live stream. He's being very vocal. Of, yes, I know. Look, you are fed. I know. I know you want to go out, but it's dark and it's rainy and it's cold. Yes, I know. I'm in the middle of a live stream. What do you want to do? Um. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just a matter of what goes where. Okay. Mm -hmm. I had to tell the man I wasn't from Ireland, Northern Ireland, never even been. But he won't take no for an answer. That's what I wrote up there. I said, no, nope, born in Northumberland. He kept saying, but you are Irish. There's a connection there. I'm, I, 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 I don't, I'm, I'm picking up on that late. Um, Caroline, maybe you said something earlier that I missed. Um, but you know there were Irish kings who who uh, who reigned over parts of Northumberland, Northumbria, Northumberland. No, it was Northumbria. Forgive me, I'll just stop talking now. Lexi Erickson says, "Poor Coda. Oh yeah, the dog doesn't get any attention. <laughs> he wants you to read him his favorite book." <laughs> um, right. So onwards and onwards and upwards. This is kind of this one is a little bit difficult. It's like the next few are like. Mm, who do you give this to? There are wonderful. Yeah, this is okay. This isn't again. This isn't one book. This is actually a number of books, but there are collections uh, in a number of counties. I'm not sure how many, but these are wonderful. Uh, and I can tell you why they're wonderful because uh, I got the the, the ones for Loud and Mead, and 
I found that there were folk tales in them and myths that I'd never heard and I'd never read anywhere else. And these are the what I what I call the 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 county folk tale books. Um, Anyway, I'll, I'll show you a few examples. This one is called Louth Folk Tales, and the author is Doreen McBride. I think these are all published by the same publisher. I will check that. The History Press, Ireland. Yes, all published by the History Press, but at different times. So, for instance, Louth Folk Tales, first published in 2015. And the website for the publisher is thehistorypress.ie. Leprechauns and other fairies, Moiry Castle's Killer Cat, Carling for Carlingford's Fairy Horse, Ireland's Atlantis, The Birth of Cuchullan and New Grange, The Hound of Ulster, Cuchullan Becomes a Warrior, etc., etc., etc. Cromwell's Siege of Drogheda, um, The Proleak Dolmen, St. Bridget, St. Patrick and the Snakes, The Battle of the Boyne, uh, uh, The Haunted House near Drogheda. Lots of interesting stuff in this. So that's loud folk tales. Then there's Meath Folk Tales, uh, published or edited or compiled by Richard Marsh. This was published again by the History Press uh, in 2013. And then there's Cork Folk Tales, uh, compiled by Kate Corkery, and again published by the History Press Ireland in 2017. And I also have Waterford Folk Tales, uh, compiled by Anne Farrell, and that was published in the year 2013. Actually, I don't know how many of those are available. Uh, I should have checked, shouldn't I? Press.ie. What time are we on? Okay, we're good. History Press cannot be reached. Hope they're still around. The History Press is now the historypress.co.uk, but that's not the same thing. That's the History Press. What about the History Press Ireland? Ireland. Ireland. Maybe their website has changed. Okay. History Press Ireland seems to be a Facebook page. Hmm. There is, and there's a phone number and a website, but it's the same website that is not available here. Is anybody able to access thehistorypress.ie on their browser? Is that just me that's not able to get into that? And the History Press Ireland, and their last post was in 2018. That doesn't look good. Hope they're still in business. But anyway, and there's a collection of folk tales from different counties uh, that are really wonderful. Uh, lovely, lovely books to have in your collection. I'm going to make those collectively uh, number 30. It's 35, isn't it? Uh, the trees was 34. I didn't have a 35, did I? Since then. No. Okay. So the county folk tales are 35. Okay. Um. Yeah. Okay. The next one we discussed in at least one previous episode, if not two, I mean, in this uh, top 50 book series, and has been mentioned uh, on... Um, the previous live streams anyway and it's not specifically about mythology funnily enough anyway I happen to know the author so again if you were wondering why is Anthony stewing so much about especially in the first couple of episodes, stewing about books and going, oh, <laughs> I have to leave this one further down. It's because I know the authors. Anyway, this is the wonderful, it's a book about medieval Ireland. And one of the things I really love about it is because it deals with what is a very, very complex period of Irish history. There's a lot of stuff that happens between the arrival of Christianity into Ireland in the fifth century and the arrival of the Anglo-Normans in the 12th century. That's seven centuries, right? There's a huge amount of stuff goes on. There's a very complex period where there's 
a, a battle for power between various factions or various clans, the kings. And then there's the arrival of um, the Vikings, for instance, which complicates things to no end. And disentangling this for us in a very readable way, um, a very informative way, and even um, at times uh, uh, a humorous way, uh, and with maps and tables, and the best thing of all about it is the pronunciation guide to all the Irish proper names, uh, the personal names, the place names, the kingdom names, the king names, anything that looks difficult. And you'd say, oh, geez, how do you pronounce that? Uh, the pronunciation guides are in the margins. And this, of course, is the book that's called Early Medieval Ireland, 431 to 1169 by the wonderful Matthew Stout. Matthew, uh, I I would have said in the early years that I knew him, he's an archaeologist, but he's actually a historian um, and a historic cartographer, somebody who makes a lot of maps and has worked on a lot of different publications making maps uh, and is brilliant at all of that. Uh, but this is a wonderfully erudite publication. And you see, so it was said to me a long time ago, I'm just going to write this in. This is number 36 on the list, uh, on our top 50 list. It was said to me a long time ago that if you want to really learn about Irish mythology, and especially when it was written down, you have to kind of know what was happening in medieval Ireland. And then you go to it, and there are brilliant books about medieval Ireland, and I wouldn't even begin to uh, you know, recommend one over the other necessarily. And this is not, uh, I'm not recommending this, I hope, at the to the detriment of others. I just found that this one was, uh, uh, it helped me to understand the nuances, the power battles uh, that were going on uh, in Ireland and why uh, the Enil kings in particular became uh, this sort of supreme uh, rulers. Um, anyway, look, there's just an example, right? There's wonderful maps showing you uh, the different battles and the different movements of people. Uh, and there's one, there's Viking raids, the first generation of Viking raids in Ireland. And on the opposite table here, you have uh, peoples mentioned in the chapter seven, uh, as in the different clan names. And there's the pronunciation guide. But in the main text, I'll give you an example I'm just trying to find a good example here in the main text right again look at this ireland in the 11th century from 1023 to 1086 places named and the different provinces etc but look here is the pronunciation game so you look and you go the clan call mine uh and the pronunciation is here clan colmon and then you'll read about no Miles Shechnail, and the pronunciation guide is here. Miles Shechnail, and Macdonald, uh, who is, uh, uh, where is that? It's there. Yes, um, etc. Uh, Brega, the kingdom, B R E G A, which is where Brunabonia is. Uh, brilliant. Yeah, Matthew Stout. He happens to be a gentleman too, and a brilliant archaeologist. Of course, he's married to Geraldine Stout, who has been a guest on our live Irish Myths and Conversation, and who featured in, uh, well, herself and Matthew, in uh, the film I did about the Bobek excavations. And I'm very disappointed to announce that I have just noticed a hairline crack across the screen of my phone. That's only the first I've seen. I presume that happened today. I didn't notice that before. Anyway, that's number 36 now. It's getting a little bit difficult because there's still some really good stuff here. Um, yeah, absolutely on this list has to be uh, we've been reading it, and in fact, we were reading it before. <sighs> I 
sorry, ah, getting distracted. We were reading before we took a detour to do other stuff, and we'll be getting back to it. And that is, of course, uh, Joyce's. <laughs> I can take it out from the shelf. That is uh, P.W. Joyce's A Social History of Ancient Ireland. Now, this is a Scholar Select facsimile reprint. Uh, I've said this before that with the old books, this was volume, this is in two volumes, by the way. Volume one was published in 1903. If you want to secure yourself uh, one of the originals, fine, go ahead and do that. It'll cost you 50 quid. It might cost you 100 quid. It might cost you 200 quid. Um, or you can do the other thing, which is to find yourself a facsimile reprint uh, for which you will pay a much, 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 much smaller sum. And because it's a facsimile reprint, it's an exact put re, 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 it's an exact, not replica, it's an exact replication of the text on the typesetting and the original images and everything else. It's not an OCR scan. And the problem with OCR scans, optical character recognition, is they often will misrepresent, completely misspell Irish words and words with fathers in them and, and word, words that are in the old Irish script and all that sort of stuff. Uh, anyway, we were reading that and had barely reached the halfway point, actually, and had been really thoroughly enjoying it. Um, so highly recommend it. Um, and it's kind of a little bit fair, unfair even, to, to single out, um, you know, works by an author. Um, so because... Well, maybe, maybe they do deserve their own slot. And I don't want to overload you either. Um, yeah, okay, we'll leave, we'll leave it at that. So the, the two volumes of Joyce's uh, Social History of Ancient Ireland. Um, yeah, really brilliant, you know. Um, yeah. Now, um, because this is more than a century old, some of the ideas in it have been superseded. So you wouldn't want to be reading this in isolation. That's why it's not in the top 10, for instance. But if you wanted something to go along with this to help you in terms of, well, how has the thinking changed since this was published? I'd be recommended, for instance, some of the items in our top 10 and top 20 among them, for instance, F.J. Burns' Irish Kings and High Kings, um, T.F. Or I no no because he's he's older. Um, uh, what was the other one I was thinking of? Um, there was definitely one more that I was thinking of that would be sort of more up to date uh, thinking in relation to this. Give me a second. It'll come back to me in a moment. Um, well, Ireland's Immortals by Mark Williams would cover. They did that down and stuff. Um, Adele Brannock's um, book about medieval Ireland, Matthew Stout's book about medieval Ireland. There was a very specific one that I was thinking of. Um, up to date works on the Brehan Laws. Um, oh, it's after getting out of my head now. And I think it was on my list. Stuff that was in the top tens top 20 oh yeah mallory uh jim mallory's um in search of the irish dream time so joyce definitely uh but only in conjunction with other stuff uh, some of the uh aforementioned works um uh, karen gogus is in the house hello there karen welcome good to see you i hope you're in good form i really do um in 1026 Priest could be married, if not monastic. When Rome broke with Constantinople, all that ended around the 1040s, says John Inman. Yes, indeed. Johnny Finlay, Medieval Ireland looks like a beautiful book. It is. It's a very, very well-produced book as well. Um, Adele Perth is in the house. Good morning to you, Adele. From all of us who are still in the Western slash Northern Hemisphere, still stuck in Monday. Um, okay. Where are we? We were on number 30. The Joyce was 37. 
So I have 38, 39, and 40 to choose. Still difficult. It's still not easy to, to, to choose one over the other. Yeah, so there's a very uh, good book. So again, check the position of it on the bookshelves before I reach for it. There's a very good book called... Oh, it's not where I thought it would be. Where are you? Uh, oh, there it is. Yeah. It is where I thought it would be. I'm just perhaps not as agile and flexible as I used to be. Yeah. Hmm. Wow, this book was published 30 years ago. And it's a retelling of the great Irish wonder tales. These legends are the action-packed stories of ancient heroes, huge battles, attempted invasions, prophecies and spells, clashes between the underworld and the real world, abductions, love affairs and feasts, which have fascinated the Irish mind for more than 2,000 years. Most of them have an extraordinary stark narrative sweep with a marvellous sense of detail. And this is a book that is called Over Nine Waves. A book of Irish legends, and the author is Marie Heaney. Yeah, um, so it, it's broken into the uh, the cycles, um, except for it doesn't really have a section on the king's cycle, but it has the mythological cycle, it has the Ulster cycle, and it has the Finn cycle. Um, so, of course, the mythological cycle would be dealing with a lot of the stuff that we would have been talking about. So, for instance, the chapter on Midger and Etain, the wooing of Etain, the Battle of Moitura, the two of the Danon, Lou comes to Tara, all of that stuff, and Balor of the Evil Eye, um, wonderfully retold by Marie Heaney. And I'm right in saying, I think, that Marie Heaney was married to the late poet Seamus Heaney, I think. Isn't that right? Um, anyway, that is a wonderful book. Now, I'm not sure if that's still in print, um, I'll find out, I think, over nine waves, Marie Heaney. Okay, so a quick Google search reveals that it's available from Blackwell's Bridge Street Books uh, eBay, Book Megastore, Etsy, hmm. O'Mahony's.ie, Dubray Books, Books Upstairs, Kenny's Bookshop books.ie yeah so it seems to be available uh, and it's available on, on, on amazon as well hardcover or paperback take your choice mine's a paperback over uh, nine waves uh, and of course that name what did i say 38 that name from uh the uh, story from laura gawala about the milesians uh, reaching an agreement with the two of the Danon at Tara, at McCall, McKecht and McGrania, in which they said, look, you go, ba go back into your boats and go out to sea by a distance of nine waves. And if you can make it back to Ireland, then we let you have it, you know. Um, and they let them have it in a way <laughs> uh, with a fierce uh, uh, sea storm. Right. Uh, we're almost there. And I have to finish now because I have to go. Um, so 39 and 40. Hmm. I'm conscious again of people on this list who I know. Hmm. That's a great book. Hmm. Yeah. Um, back to our friend who was number two on the list. Our, our number two author of the book that was in number two position wrote a brilliant, um, a brilliant book. He is dead now, unfortunately. 
but he has left behind a substantial legacy. Um, and one of his great works was the book that he wrote about Finn McCool. Now, I have a book about Finn McCool, but uh, I absolutely bow in deference to this wonderful scholar. Uh, my book's a small one, and it's about the mythology, the toponymy, as in the, the, the uh, place names, and the cosmology of the story of Finn and the Salmon of Knowledge. So it just takes one small story from the Finn cycle and explores it. Uh, but this book is by our good friend who compiled the encyclopedia that was in second place on our list, uh, Dahi O'Hogan. And the book is called Fionn McCall, Images of the Gaelic Hero. That was originally published, by the way, in 1988 by Gill and Macmillan Limited. I don't know what happened to Macmillan, but um, Gill and Macmillan is now just Gill. They're a publisher and distributor. Um, but uh, that is a wonderful study and very readable, very accessible, uh, but still scholarly because Dahi O'Hogan was a scholar. So there's a very comprehensive bibliography and there are comprehensive footnotes, as you would expect from a scholarly work. Um, and really everybody approaching Irish myth wants to know about the heroes of Irish myth. So we've got heroes in the two of the Danon. We've got the likes of Dagda and Angus and Mananon and Lou and, you know, Nuada and all of those. We've got heroes in the Ulster Cycle, Cúchulán, um, King Cúncavar, or Crohor, MacNessa. Um, we've got uh, definitely the major hero of the Finn Cycle is the one the cycle is named after, uh, and that's a wonderful book. Not sure if that's still available. That's the only thing, uh, but definitely, definitely uh, well worth getting your hands on. It's difficult to place some of these over others because there are still some brilliant books um which we haven't gotten around to yet and you know um as i said and repeatedly i'm saying it at this stage um to the point that it's probably becoming tiresome listening to me saying it um yeah and i have one more to pick to put in this here and not to um, is it possible to sort of select it wouldn't be considered cheating to select a number of books by one author and put them into one sort of category Yeah, well, that's not exactly what I'm going to do, but I'm just looking for one in particular that um, I seem to have misplaced, which I'm mortified about. Uh, is that it there? Um, so apologies. Well, I can tell you about it. I just can't immediately pull it down off the shelf because it's gone walkabout. It's just not in the place that I thought it should be. It isn't. No, it's definitely not there. Okay, uh, but I can tell you about it. Anyway, uh, the author is our good friend uh, Morgan Daimler. And she's published a lot of books about Irish mythology. So I'll give you some examples. There is a book. None of these, by the way, is particularly big. These are not comprehensive works, but they're very accessible. And uh, I will say something about Morgan. Um, so she lives in the United States. Um, but she 
as part of her study of Irish myth, uh, learned uh, Middle Irish. So she can actually translate uh, Middle Irish documents. I can't do that. <laughs> uh, there are uh, much, much more learned scholars than either of us who do that. Uh, but uh, that's a, a wonderful thing to be able to post. So that's about the Dogda. There's one about the Morrigan. Somebody here called Dogda Morrigan watching today. There's one about Mananon MacLear. And there's one that's generally called Gods and Goddesses of Ireland. Now, the one that's missing that I can't find is the one that is her translation of Caught Moitura, the Second Battle of Moitura. Um, and there's something extraordinary about that because Whitley Stokes and um, who's the other person who tried to or did a translation of Caught Moitura? Was it Elizabeth Gray? Or was it Cecilia Rahan? I think it was Elizabeth Gray, wasn't it? I'm not, I'm not sure if I have that right. There were two scholars who translated Caught My Chura, but there was a section of Caught My Chura that um, um, was con perhaps considered untranslatable. Uh, the Irish wasn't translated into the English in either of those. And I'm just disappointed that I can't show you. It's a, it's a, it's a slimline book, book. It's a small book like this. Uh, why is it not where I thought it would be? Um, uh, and that is uh, Morgan Daimler's Morgan Daimler, and it's called uh, Caught My Chura. Full English translation. Uh, so, for instance, that's available on Amazon. Um, Paperback is five pounds twenty seven, so it's probably six or seven euros slash dollars. Hang on, just before I completely uh, give up on it. Um, Nancy, thank you very much for pre ordering the book about Fornox. Brilliant. And I have to keep at it now, night and day, to get it finished. Uh, thank you indeed, and I hope you enjoy it. Um, yeah, I'm just going to take one very quick sweep of where I wouldn't expect it to be. And just to see if I can quickly find, maybe it's just somewhere that I didn't think it would be. And can't see it. No, can't see it. So it goes, it goes, it, it counts as missing in action. But it's around somewhere. It's definitely, it's not the sort of book that I would uh, let out of my sight. Anyway, yeah, it's here somewhere. And that is uh, Morgan Daimler. Uh, so we're finishing on Morgan Daimler. Um, so the works of Morgan Daimler, I'm going to put them all into one rather than s select one in particular. Um, they're accessible and affordable, which means that for the price of one of the other books, so for instance, perhaps the likes of Hidden Ulster, which is out of print, um, uh, you might be able to get several of uh, Morgan Daimler's books. But just don't forget Cot Moitura. And that is spelt, uh, just in case you, you, you need the spelling, C-A-T-H-M-A-I-G-E-T-U-I-R-E-D. A full... English translation by Morgan Daimler. So there you go. I'm putting that into the comments. Yes, indeed. Uh, Eva is saying Amazon have it in the US for $17. Is that uh, number 39? The Fionn McCool book, was it by Dahi Hogan? Or is it it's hardly one of Morgan's books? Um, Rex says grabbed that one way back in 1998 in Westport. Uh, or is that uh, Marie Heaney's Over Nine Waves? Um, yeah, brilliant. Anyway, I'm going to have to leave it at that, folks. Um, thank you all very much for tuning in. And tune in for next week for the last 10 in the list. And, you know, at the end of that, there will be a honourable mention for all the ones who didn't make the top 50, but who still absolutely would be on a list of, yeah, if you really want a, a decent library about Irish myth and legend, here's the stuff that has to be on it. There'll be websites too, by the way. I mean, I'm thinking in particular of Michael Fortune and Folklore.ie. And Michael recently produced a book of Wexford folk tales, uh, folklore, which is very, very good. Of course, he has collected all that folklore direct from people over the years and recorded them 
and he's got lots and lots of video footage and audio uh, recordings, uh, like an amazing body of work for one person. Um, so we'll be given lots of honourable mentions as well. For now, I have to say goodbye. Uh, tomorrow morning, I'm straight back into the Four Knox. In fact, I'll be doing work on the Four, Mo Four Knox monograph this evening. Um, at the moment, I'm just trying to organise some photographs for different sections of it. Uh, and as a working night on day to get that done, pre-order yours, your copy on the Mythical Ireland website, mythicalireland.com in the shop under books. It's been wonderful to have you in the library. Hope you had a good uh, uh, episode and uh, please do tune in next week. And of course, in the meantime, keep an eye on all the social medias, the Facebook page, the Mythical Ireland community, uh, or if you're an artist or a creative person, the Mythical Ireland Creatives is there for you to share your work. Uh, we're also on Twitter, Instagram. We, are, we have a TikTok account, but I haven't really used it because I don't know how to use TikTok. Um, so we're on Twitter, we're on Instagram, we're on that new threads thing. Uh, and of course, the YouTube channel. Uh, don't forget to check out the website. Very comprehensive resource. And please do consider becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash mythical Ireland. Become a Bronze Age Patreon. Patron is the very best level in terms of the rewards that you get for that. Uh, but uh, if you can, uh, I'd much appreciate it. Goodbye for now. Ikawa, Colos, Solve, Slong, Fol, August, Toga, Buggy. And I hope that we'll see you all next week for our celebration of Imbolc and Bridget. Thank you, Lexi.